Welcome to Millennial Milkshake, the podcast where three, we forgot to fucking say where we, where we are. We did. We certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he started talking, I was like, wait. Oh. I was like, oh. Welcome to Millennial Milkshake, the podcast where three filthy animals revisit, re-experience, and review things from our childhood. My name's Colin O'Connell, and I was born in 1994. My name's Josh Sicali. I was born in 1995. And my name's Michelle Potter. I was born in 1997. And uh, today, we're not messing around. We're getting right into it. We're reviewing two movies. Last time we did this, it was the Hocus Pocus Halloween episode, and it went way too long. So we've cut everything. All of our segments are gone. We're just talking about movies, all right? Watch. This is this is when our talks of the movies are going to be like 20 minutes each, and the episode's going to turn out to be 40 minutes long. <laughs> We're going to realize we could have done fun segments. So oh, much more. Man. We're already off track. <laughs> So we're reviewing uh, Home Alone and Elf, and we're going to compare, contrast, do all that good stuff. Uh, Before we started recording, I think we agreed we're going to talk about Home Alone first, right? Yes. Okay. So just in case anyone doesn't know what Home Alone is, has never seen it, I'm just going to give a quick little intro into what the movie is. Home Alone asked the classic holiday question, what would happen if an entire family was so neglectful and emotionally abusive towards their youngest child that they left him home all by himself in the middle of winter while they lived it up in first class on a flight to Paris. In this charming wintertime classic, sociopath Kevin McAllister is forced to fend for himself while cat burglars Harry and Marv attempt not once, not twice, not thrice, but four times to rob his house. At least, that's the part of the movie you remember. What you probably don't remember are those thrilling scenes of when Kevin goes shopping or when Kevin's dad struggles to speak French on the phone, or when Joe Pesci plays with Christmas toys in the middle of burglarizing a house. That's right, the movie is not just quirky house-based traps that put the last 20 minutes of Predator to shame. There's also Kieran Culkin, who plays bedwetter Fuller McAllister and is plotting with his cousin Buzz to overthrow Uncle Frank as to who can be the biggest asshole in the family. Or wait, is that just the TV show Succession? I'll be honest, I watched them back to back, and I'm not sure, but uh, in one of them, Kieran and Culkin says, how was the date? Did you fuck them or just tug them off between courses? But I think he said that in Home Alone. So let's talk about this John Hughes written and Christopher Columbus directed classic, as well as that les incompetent disease himself, Kevin McAllister in Home Alone. Woo! Yeah, that about that about sums it up. Huh? All Very right. Good. Yeah. I just got to get my notes. All right. So um, I have been barred. I have been restrained. I have been silenced from mentioning a certain other movie on this podcast. And um, I'm not going to say it, but um, there is a movie that we're going to review right now called Home Alone. And there might be another movie with a similar title that I have more experience uh, and history with. But I'm not going to talk about it. So, Michelle, Josh, let's talk about Home Alone. All righty. So, Colin, you may talk about it. It's okay. It's all right, but no, if, if I it, just I watched the second one more, and it and it has all right. This is all I'll say. <laughs> this is the only thing I'll say about the second one. Stolen credit card. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. We can talk about the first one. All right. So, um, I guess we could we could uh, kind of whiz through the personal histories if you guys want real quick as we're talking about this one. So, um. Anybody anybody have any any specific memories or histories that they'd like to announce? No. This movie was just kind of on a good bit in my childhood. And I watched the second one more. And that's kind of it. Yeah, it was on a good bit. I feel like I watched the first and second one probably the same amount. But between Home Alone and Elf, I feel like Home Alone was a part of my earlier childhood that I watched all the time. And then eventually I switched over to Elf to watching that all the time. So it's been a minute since I've seen Home Alone, um, but it was a big part of my childhood. I quite liked it back then. Michelle, how long has it been since you've seen Home Alone? Ooh, I don't know, maybe five years. Holy shit. I know. Yeah. All right. Well, I watch it every year. Um, watched it every year when I was a kid. Honestly, I don't know which one I watched more between the first or second. I almost feel like if I watched the first, I just act, like nor- naturally watched the second one right after it. Um couldn't really tell you which one I liked more, 
Um, I enjoyed them both a lot. Who did you guys like between Harry and Marv when you were a kid? As a kid, definitely Marv. Yeah. Yeah. You probably Same. probably appreciate Harry a lot more now. He's Joe Pesci is literally the best one in this movie. I think. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> he's, yeah. He's it's, really it's so funny. weird. It's so weird how, how you see that comedic change. I mean, Marv is still hilarious, but Harry, it, I don't know. He, he he kills it a little bit over Marv. Um, it's kind of, yeah, because like Mar- Marv has a lot like a physical comedy, right? He's, you know. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like how, like when you watch Three Stooges, when you're a kid, you naturally like Curly, but you realize Mo is equally, if not funnier, when that's kind of like how I see these two. Um, I just have to shout out maybe my favorite moment um, or favorite like line read of the whole movie is when um, Marv comes back into the van. He's like, some oh guy God. named Snakes. <laughs> and Joe Pesci goes, Snakes, Snakes. I don't know no snakes. <laughs> okay. So I, honestly funny. Thought, I thought you were going to say something else. So I'm just going to say my favorite scene now, or one of them at least. It's, it's when they're... Um, I, they're checking out the place in one of the scenes, and Harry tells Marv to go check it out. And it just the, it cuts to Marv just nodding with like with like a real like like he's squinting his eyes like <laughs> like just like agreeing, and that's all he's doing. And <laughs> Harry just looks at him, and he just has this like he has this bewilderment. He's like he doesn't say anything. He just looks at him like a double take. And Marv looks over and he says, "Now." And <laughs> Or just, he just throws his hand. He's like, no, tomorrow, Egghead, now. Go ahead. <laughs> I also like the part when uh, they're like, we'll come back at night. And Marv goes, little kids are scared of the dark. And he and Harry goes, you're afraid of the dark too, Marv. Like, he says it so matter of fact. Uh. I feel like those two are kind of like, and Kevin, obviously, are like, those are like the three main right characters that we think of in the movie but a lot of this movie is like i thought they were in it more almost like harry and marv like they pop up sporadically throughout right um like i said in the intro they try to rob the house four separate occasions (laughs) yeah but i always thought they were in it more and honestly i don't really like remember a lot of the parts with the family once they leave like I, i it kind of blanks out for me from the moment she goes, she says, Kevin. And then when she meets um, uh, John Candy, you know, I don't remember a lot with them in between that. Interesting. Did you did you watch this a lot? Or I mean, I know you said that you mm-hmm. watched the second one a lot. Just kind of. Kind of I blank. think I think that's the issue is I think sometimes I can conflate them in my mind, like because those scenes in particular when they're trying to get back and everything and they're stuck and all that, you know, it's, uh, that, you know, I, I don't want to talk about the second one. So you can talk about the second one. I'm not going to talk about the second one. What we are going to talk about is this movie, uh, opens up with just Kevin's just getting all of the shit in the world his way he, has there been a meaner family like they they give the family from matilda a run for their money like how terrible they, they are to kevin really do and after all of it's over and he, his mom sends him to the third floor he's like i'm sorry and his mom goes it's too late yeah <laughs> and then he she just like, goes she up like there. Heads him on yeah i was like geez i didn't realize how mean she was yeah but everyone in his family really doesn't like him uh, it seems. They hate him. <laughs> yeah. Well, is, I mean, and this is not to defend the family or the mom, but is Kevin's apology that sincere? Or is he just, or is he just trying to get out of going upstairs to the to his room? Not that he deserves to be yeah, sent it, to his it's room. Not, it's not sincere, but not still, if you're like, if you're an eight-year-old kid who's just gotten yelled at, like says sorry, you like, you don't just tell him to fuck off. That's what she does, essentially. <laughs> She and does. what's the reason he gets he gets brought upstairs? Because he he runs into Buzz and it and it cu- causes a whole it spills fiasco. some soda and milk. That's yeah. all it does. And I mean, honestly, how can you be so? I I don't know. Like how how is Buzz not caught? Honestly, Such I mean, a piece like of shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I feel like it was always the other way around for me. 
I feel like the it was always the the younger sibling that usually got more of the slack. Like they almost I, they almost never saw when he was annoying, and maybe it was it was more his his fault or or he was instigating me. But in, in this one, it's it's uh, like yeah. that is that is not how it was. I I'll know be that honest. song very well, Josh. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's weird to see, and someone who. Is such an asshole like Buzz just completely doesn't get any repercussions at all. Nope. Yeah, nothing. Never. <laughs> it's terrible. Ugh, so, man. so yeah, that opening scene. Um, oh One thing yeah, I ahead. noticed that I didn't remember is that be- because he runs into Buzz and spills the milk or whatever, his dad throws away his passport, and I feel like that's one of the that's one of the reasons they forget him. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, they throw his ticket because like when the the woman at the front desk is like counting the tickets, she his Kevin's is missing, so there's like no red flag. She doesn't have an extra ticket. Yes, I, I never noticed that. I, this is the first time I noticed it. I always thought it was just like she just forgot and that's it. They do do but, a lot of things to like set up like why like the phone lines are down so yeah kevin mm-hmm. yeah they can't call the house and and stuff and um th- yeah they do a pretty good job i think of setting that some of that stuff up yeah they do a, a way better job than i remember them doing what, what <laughs> so they don't do cool. well is how they speak to an eight-year-old nope <laughs> all of them the can, is there okay i referenced it again in the intro but when his sister says i think it's his sister right says you're mm-hmm. what the French call les incompetents and she does this little laugh. She's like <sighs> like she thought it was the funniest thing she's ever fucking said in her entire life. And you're you're it... what the French call they bitch. How about that? <laughs> she's so mean. And his uncle, his adult Oh my god. <laughs> uncle he's the, he's looks the him. biggest piece of shit in this movie. Yeah, he's a bigger really? piece of shit than Harry and Marv. Oh my god. Yeah. Really looks him in the eye and goes, Look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> And it's not funny. It's so mean. And then I mean that's that, that's not even the worst parts of Frank. I mean the, wor- the the worst is the constant the constant cheapness of the of the man. I mean it's like it's so yeah. over the top. How about when he takes that shrimp cocktail out and then the the person whose house he's in, the his brother his sister in law, it's like Frank, that's for later, and he just doesn't care. Yeah, it's like dude, you're he's in like, someone's home. Excuse you. Who are, who do you think you are? Or um, when they're on the plane and he tells his wife to uh, to put he tells her to put her put something in the purse. Is it is it yeah, the salt and pepper shakers? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking <laughs> asshole, man. How much do you guys think Joe Pesci spent on his outfit? That's a pretty good outfit. The cop uniform, or yeah, yeah. How come he doesn't break into places with that? That's my question. It's a good. It's a good point. Didn't yeah. think of that. Be like, I'm just, I'm just checking it out. That's my Joe Pesci impression. It's good. Where did he get that cop uniform? Because it has like the official like Chicago flag and everything on it. I'm thinking they captured one, oh. and yeah. You ooh, okay. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know if if they're that wise to to pull off such a stunt. To be honest, they're pretty. I don't know. They're pretty empty in the head. Yeah, I think not to bring up the second one. I'm sorry, Josh. I think they are way darker in the second one than in this one, because in the second one, they straight up want to kill Kevin. Like they just want to kill him. Like that's the only reason. Like, you know, I don't know if you remember, but he has like he's like, I have a gun in my pocket, kid. I'm going to shoot you. (laughs) It's like, whoa. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Now, let me let me ask you this. Can can you blame them? No, he they got fucking fucked I up. I mean, I'm I'm a they're treated as cartoon characters in this. I mean, you want to talk about over the top? I I mean, the second one I think is worse. Not to bring it up, I'm sorry. You know, I'm going against my own rules here, but like when he turns into a skeleton <laughs> in the second yeah. one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we're not talking about the second one. <laughs> we can talk about the second one. We're not we're not talking about the second one. We're gonna talk about how he gets uh fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark his hand. Gets when he puts it on the doorknob. Yeah, do you guys have a favorite a favorite uh, prank that Kevin pulls on them? I was thinking 
Now the pink is my can, favorite. The pink, the pink can is kind of the classic, right? The pink, the pink can is good. The one that was always the hardest for me to watch as a kid was when he steps on the nail. Yep, absolutely. Oh, I agree. oh God! I will be honest. I never really understood why that was like. I mean, people put that up there with some one of the hardest scenes to watch in movies. It, like that was always one, and I it never bothered me like watching it. I don't That's know. That's a big nail. It's so big. It's a big nail. I, I guess you're right. And I guess it's like, it's probably the hardest to watch, but never bothered me as much as it bothers a lot of people. Like people really cringe at it when I, when I and I think cause it's less cartoony than a lot of the other ones. It's kind of just straight up. He's just stepping on a nail. Like, it's like so when slow. he gets, I know <laughs> when he gets like, when they, the head, like when the fire is on his head, Joe Pesci does his like, ah, or when they get hit with the paint cans, they like fly back. You know, it's like cartoony, but like that moment, it's like, no, that's like a foot going in a nail. Like it's almost real. Yeah. It's it's definitely the worst to watch, but even still, I mean, some people, some people look away. They can't even watch it. But um, I I think one of my favorite Marv parts, even when I was a little, when I was little, and he's he's down he's downstairs the basement door, and he's he can't catch his footing on the ground and <laughs> you just see his feet spread wall to wall <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like, yeah that's a that's a great part for some it's so simple and it's so funny yeah so here's the problem with the movie for me though is though that last sequence that last like part of the movie when he's defending the house is just in my opinion way better than the rest of the movie yeah it, it, so, you know, yeah, it's what it's everyone re- the best part. It's yeah. what most people remember. Like there are moments leading up to it, like in the rest of the movie that you remember. But like everyone remembers that whole that whole part. Yeah. And I think honestly, so I'm going to I'm going to talk. I, I guess I'm going to talk a little negative since Colin kind of opened up the can of worms here. I do not like Kevin. I I I don't know if I don't know if people do. I don't know if he's likable to a lot of people. Um, I feel like he is, but I can't stand him. And I, I'm trying to think of when that started. Josh, I, is, I your, to... is your last name McAllister? <laughs> oh, I, you caught me. <laughs> no, but I. And I'm not even saying it's you know Macaulay Culkin. He he, he does a fine job. He's he's a young kid. I'm not even saying like he's he's definitely much better than a lot of kid actors but he's still really bad in a, in a lot of scenes i think he's better in the second one not to bring up the second one he is but be- i feel like he's way better in the second one oh he very well might be I, I, yeah i'm not even gonna argue with you on that one but i really just can't stand him in it um i don't know how you guys feel about it i i just get super annoyed and it's I don't know. I think I just get annoyed with his acting. I I feel the opposite way. I wrote down while I was watching this, Kevin is so funny. Because I remember Marvin Harry being hilarious, but I don't really remember Kevin being that funny. But he's, fun- he's funny. I like him. I think he's funny. I think he's good in it. Wow. I mean, yeah. I, hey, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad because I, I will be honest. I don't think I laugh once from Kevin. <sighs> What? You know what I hate? I hate when they do the aftershave gag the second time. Oh, yeah. That it's is weird. weird that they yeah. do it twice. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, hold on. Can you guys give me a couple scenes that might make you chuckle that Kevin does and not influenced by any other character? The, okay, the way he runs up the stairs after he sees, like, the shovel guy outside. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty hilarious. Good. When he goes, ah, and he just runs up the stairs. That's pretty yeah. good. I do agree with that. All right. So I might pick a ha- I might when pick he, a handful he, where when, I chuckle when the, when the groceries drop out and he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, like and you know so what? Over it. Yes, and you know why that's good because he's not overacting. He's not that. I like the parts where he's he's not visibly trying so hard to be you, you funny. Know, yeah, I mean or, he is eight. I yeah. know, and that, and I and that's where I try to cut the slack. But you there's know. Other, I don't know. Listen, not not to bring up Hocus Pocus. He's better than the fucking little girl in Hocus Pocus. He certainly is. It's not even close. He certainly is. One of my favorite lines (laughs) that I never caught before is when he's in the church 
um, with the guy, and he goes, I have a friend who got nailed because there was a rumor he wore dinosaur pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so Which funny. Which doesn't seem that extreme for like an eight year old. Yeah. See, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't laugh. I laugh at the old man's reaction where he just goes, I guess, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. He's, he, there's there's a genuine concern to his reaction when Kevin tells him that. There's a few jokes that I feel like I didn't get as a kid, like um, the pizza, like the pizza guy. He uh, if they don't get the pizza to them in 20 minutes or less, it's free. So that's why he's speeding into the driveway and he hits the statue because he that's doesn't so want the pizza funny. to be free. And the way he says later in the movie when he's like, "You got to pay for your pizza, sir." <laughs> well you have to pay for your yeah. pizzas <laughs> you know what you know what my least favorite kevin moments are and there's a good amount in this in the second one and i'm probably alone here but it's the it's the serious kevin the like thought-provoking speeches he gives or i don't know it seems it seems very very corny or like like he really sucks up to the to the people when he like not to bring up the second one but when he's talking to um duncan yeah it's just i i just yeah i feel so annoyed when he's just like i don't i don't i can't even explain it i i'm trying to i'm trying to think of more moments in the first one where he's like that um i get your like little feeling of annoyance i like when he's in the church with the old guy and he gives him like actual real advice yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i i feel that a little bit but i also just tried to like i don't know it's sweet it's sweet i also really liked the old man shovel guy whatever his name is so much in this one like this time i watched it Mm -hmm. he's Um, great when buzz tells that story about him i got like sandlot vibes you know, the part yeah. I'm talking about when they're talking about the beast. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. all I could think is, this is done way better in the Sandlot. I'm sorry. <laughs> when Squints is telling That's the fair. story yeah. about his, his grandfather or whatever. I mean, the old man doesn't Wait, help. He but, does uh, give... Josh, I mean, you don't yeah. find you don't find Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. You don't find that funny? I I do I do find his his initial reaction his the face he makes yeah okay. oh that's funny like like I said there, there of course there's parts I chuckle but I think there's a lot of parts that are that are made to make the audience laugh and there's a lot of parts that the audience does laugh at from Kevin that I just don't I don't laugh yeah, at. yeah the aftershave isn't funny so I think that I think that it gets clouded by that um so I focus more on the how overrated his scenes are the funny scenes I just I don't, I don't, I don't laugh at a lot of them. You um, know, it is funny to me when he steals the toothbrush. And that lady goes. Bring up the toothbrush scene. The lady goes, Jimmy, stop him! And it cuts two pants over to Jimmy, and he's just like, <gasps> <laughs> Jimmy, stop that boy! <laughs> it's well, like right. straight out of like a fucking like a like a 1950s TV show. <laughs> Like it's like out of Bonanza or something. Like I don't know. But like that scene right there, when he goes to the cash, the cashier, and he says, "Can you check to see if this toothbrush is approved by, um, oh shit, what's he say? The American Dental Association." Yeah. Like, are you are you kidding me? I don't remember a kid a- asking questions like that. There's there's parts where he's, you know what it is? He's very cocky and condescending a lot of times. Yes. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's why I don't like. That's why like, I don't like him a lot. Like when he's buying groceries. Yeah, he's, he's like, yeah. That's what it is. He's too he's too big for his shoes. All of a sudden. But again, there's a funny part when she's like she's like asking him like where do you live and he goes I can't tell you that. Why not? Because you're a stranger. <laughs> like that's good. I like that's funny. I love yeah. when he goes to. Have you tried these TV dinners out? And she's like, I don't know. And he's like. I'll give him a shot. See, I think Josh so doesn't funny. like that. I feel like Josh like heard that line and was like, "Ugh, this kid." I, I don't laugh. I don't laugh at that. Yeah, I'll be honest. Yeah. I I, I kind of get what you mean. There are two very different like personas that he puts on. Yeah. yeah. And I I usually don't like either of them. Some I like. There's almost there's almost three. 
And the third one I like because it's not he doesn't utilize the third one as much. And it's it's the it's the very subtle Kevin. It's not the it's not the I'm gonna give you life advice, you know, Kevin, or the the over the top I'm trying to make you laugh, Kevin. It's the it's the one where he's carrying the groceries and it's just a realistic fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's that. Um Yeah, it's it's the more it's the more toned down parts that that are fine. Um but I mean I remember Macaulay Culkin I mean, th- this kid was one of the biggest stars in, like, 1990, I think, right? I'm trying to think what he did before this. I think Uncle Buck came out before this, no? Yeah, it did. I think that was, like, um, 86. No, um, he would have been, like, four then, right? I know he was, He was. He was like, five or six in that, probably. He's in... Oh, no, Uncle Buck was 89, my bad, so it was, it was right before. Yeah, I don't know when, like, Richie Rich came out. I remember watching Richie Rich as a kid. Um... He's in. I feel like he's in something else. It's like something. Oh, obviously, he was in a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, no. Th- I mean, this was like before. I mean, Uncle Buck, and there's another one that I've never seen, but that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah. So for one of his first roles, kid, kid does it a, a pretty good job. I'm not. I'm not gonna take that away from. Him. I just get annoyed. I get. I'm a little. I'm a little harsher on him because of. Um, how much how much acclaim he he does get um i think i think sometimes people forget i don't know i i i feel like i feel like he's he's held a little too high um but maybe not maybe not i don't know i mean i know when i i think i think uh my little brother also gets pretty annoyed with him now um i think he used to love him when he was a kid but so i definitely liked kevin a lot when i was a kid i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie but Guess as I got older, he got a little more annoying. Do you find the mom annoying? No, I think she's funny. The great Catherine O'Hare. I I actually think she's funny in this. She's also I used to think she was annoying when I was little, but probably because I was a kid, so I was like, oh, she's so fuck. She's um she's pretty funny when she's at the phone. Yeah. She's like, hello, hello, who is this? I'll have to call you back. <laughs> no, she, she's actually really good in it. Um, or when or when she says, uh, I forget when she's on the phone, but she says, pick up. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I, I actually like her, her a lot. Can we talk this. about just how mu- how nice it must be to be a rich white kid, um, in Chicago that, oh, the police can just stroll by and check up on you whenever. <laughs> how, how nice it must be. And then Buzz has the gall to be like, oh, he's never had to struggle or whatever. He's always had everything, had whatever. It's like, Buzz, you fucking, you live in the same house. You're just as privileged as he is, you little fucking shit ass. Like I, I hate Buzz <laughs> so much. Oh, Buzz is the worst. Do you hate him or do you hate his buzz cut? Both. I mean, which which do you really his, hate? I hate his teeth the most. <laughs> no, I I don't hate anything physically about him. I'm not gonna talk about it like a little kid's, you know, a little dumpy little kid, whatever he looks like. He's just a piece of shit as a character. Yeah, there's a lot of them in this movie. Yeah, but he's the worst. He's I think he's worse than Uncle Frank. No. Uncle Frank's an adult, so he has no excuse. <laughs> yeah, but, but I will, Buzz is I will straight up abusive towards Kevin. Like but, it's not yeah. even bullying, it's like straight up abusive. The redeeming thing about Frank is that as infuriating as he is, he can be funny. There's like there's a couple of parts you can probably find that are kind of funny. I don't think you could find one with Buzz. He has the one joke where he's like A two D, like when he's listing the things, he's like three things, but it's like, eh. Yeah, and I could, I could, I could leave that. He's like, do you, is it true that French babes don't shave their pits? And it's like, Buzz, no, no French babes are gonna be concerned with you. Shut up. <laughs> um, let's let's try let's try and get in a, in a little Harry Marv discussion. Um, Colin, you and I talked about some of our favorite parts. Michelle, what what's a what's a standout? for you man i don't know like con said like the last 20 minutes is like or you know the whole where they're going through the whole house um i don't know i i don't know why this joke always gets me but when he calls them the wet bandits i think that's (laughs) funny the whole thing with the sink like so ridiculous he comes he comes back to the van so pleased and he's he's, like what are you smiling at you and he's he's just like you you did it again didn't you (laughs) i told you not to do it why'd you do it (laughs) 
That's so good. Or I, li- I like the- I like when they're going through the house and Marv is just he's just he has his crowbar and he's just yeah, wrecking yeah. everything. <laughs> I forget I forget how Harry introduces the line. I didn't write it down. He goes, you know, you're one of the great cat burglars of the world or something. He said something like that. You think you could keep it down a little bit, huh? <laughs> he gives a lot of uh a lot of uh to bring up another Joe Pesci movie, my cousin Vinny. I always think of the scene when he goes, Your Honor, please. He he has a few moments like this with Marv. <laughs> like, like when he's talking about, like, you know, shitting on Marv and stuff. There's there's a classic, like, funny part that's known as probably the funniest part in the movie, which is the spider. I don't know if yeah. you guys still laugh at that. Yeah. I do. I, really? I, yeah, I think it's funny. No, I, 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 st- I, still, I still laugh at it. His, his scream is so, is just... It's 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 hilarious. I think it's funnier when he when he he's like, "Don't worry, Harry, I'll get it," and he gets him with the crowbar. Yeah, <laughs> and then so, Harry gets up and it's like, "Okay," <laughs> like starts hitting him back. So the funniest part for that, like, it used to be the scream, but then when I started liking Harry, it's just, <laughs> and he's like, "Did I get him?" And he's like, "He's like, never mind, did you get him? How do you like it, huh? You jerk, <laughs> you <laughs> jerk." <laughs> he calls him a jerk. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that's uh, that that's tied. That's tied for the funniest part. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's good. I'm um, sweating. Uh, so we are having a lot of fun with this movie. Um, but I, I I do have a problem with some of like the contrivances with it. Like everybody's out of town. Like everybody. Like oh, ev- yeah. like everyone they know is out of town. Okay, that seems a little meh. Yeah, like, really? None of your neighbors? Not one? <laughs> also, how come none of them have a Chicago accent? <laughs> the only yeah. ones with a Chicago on. accent are the driver for, like, the... the <laughs> when he's like, I don't know, kid, why are you bothering me? And then there's the there's the <laughs> cop who's like, there's no one home. Tell her to count her kids again. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're the only ones with, like, a Midwestern accent in the yeah. whole movie. Yeah. Not so accurate. What, uh, uh, Michelle, I want to ask you, because you uh, lived, uh, was it in Chicago or near Chicago? You know, when you near were Near Chicago, yeah. So how often are you getting very thin crust pizza delivered to you in Chicago? Honestly, we, I think we got like pizza like that i don't ever remember getting deep dish pizza unless we were actually in chicago yeah i could see like deep dish like you don't want that delivered that's that's a mess yeah that pizza but was isn't very like, <laughs> isn't like thin, ta- isn't like tavern style pizza like the other kind of pizza in chicago i thought maybe i don't, I don't know. know i, don't I remember. just thought it just looked very new yorky to me that pizza it did yeah it did nothing compared to the cheese pizza in the second one i'm sorry josh you have to bring it up again but that pizza that he gets in the limo is some of the best pizza ever put to film oh mamma mia like best looking pizza or oh, best looking and it's just a cheese pizza like i get it if you if you're like a toppings person but when it comes to visual quality for a cheese pizza that's oh i think it was so i good. think it was the visual steam that really gave it yes yeah all right so how much of an issue do you guys have with the impracticality aspect of this film so that's Not part much. of it, right? I, I it, can most forgive of the it. movie is fi- is like kind of normal, right? And I'm then fine, at the yeah. end of the movie, it's just, well, these guys should be dead. I'm I'm fine with that. So so aside from that, <laughs> it's worse in the second one. When he's when he's prepping the house, just like some of the like when he pours the bucket of water on the steps and it freezes in, what, ten minutes? First off, so he, fast. first off, he gets that whole house ready in how long? I mean, he, I'm trying to think of when he leaves. And he the, makes himself a nice little mac and cheese dinner. Yeah, he, he leaves the church TV probably. Dinner. He leaves the church probably an hour before nine o'clock, I think. Yeah, and he has to get all the way back there. Probably took him like half hour, twenty minutes to get back there. He's walking. Yeah, I, I mean, that's my only. I'm I'm honestly fine with the cartoony aspect of the you know Harry and Marv never getting killed. That's fine, but prepping the house annoys me more. I'm going to point out something that's going to piss you off. He puts the ornaments by the window. That only makes sense if he knows that the person who's going downstairs is going to come back upstairs and go through the window. 
Barefoot too. Barefoot. Well, yeah. he, it's barefoot because he puts his stuff on the floor. But yeah, yeah, he, that it only works that way if he yeah. knows that the person that's going it. Yeah, and it's like that doesn't work if Harry decides to go through the window first with his shoes still on. Is Fucking idiot. Ever, is there ever a moment where you want Kevin to get caught by Harry and Marv? Nah, I'm rooting for Kevin. Yeah, the whole time. I'm rooting for Kevin the whole time. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck these guys stealing from rich suburban Chicago white people. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm just a sick man. I don't know. You are sick. You just really don't like Kevin. <laughs> you know what? Let, I, I I'm with you, Josh. Let's. I'm gonna flip it. I think Harry and Marv should have killed him. <laughs> I think th- I think they at least that Harry should have at least bitten off his fingers. I like when he turns into a cannibal. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm gonna bite off it's each like, and every I'm one of these bite fingers. Bite off all your fingers. <laughs> what? He gets so close to. He puts them in his mouth. Yeah. And then he gets whacked on on the head. Gets bonked on the head by a big ass shovel. No, but I you know I will say this. I can I can put aside, um the mature Kevin in the church because that is that I actually do like that scene a lot. It's because the old man, it's like a very, it's like a very sweet Christmassy scene. Um, and Kyle, I remember when, when you were saying this, um, this movie, you, you were saying this movie isn't really that Christmassy until like, well, like it's like the fundamental premise isn't a Christmas premise as opposed to the other movie we'll talk about, which is, you know, Fun, like fundamentally it's a Christmas movie like yeah. Home Alone um, I don't know if you guys uh, came across this in the research but it's actually like it got sued for uh, plagiarism for some like ugh, I think it was a French like thriller horror movie where it's like a similar thing where a kid has to fend his house when his like uh, his like from like two burglars or something um, oh wow so, like, the premise of the movie, like, isn't inherently Christmassy, but it's still a Christmas movie because, one, it takes place during Christmas, and two, it includes that whole, like, family thing, like, you know, the family back yeah. for Christmas and all that. So, yeah, that's that's I, kind of the point I was making. Okay. And that's why yeah. Die Hard is also a Christmas movie. Cause yeah, I'm very forgiving. Because people who say that it's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm very forgiving when it comes to the rules of what a Christmas movie needs to entail. And yes, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Whoever's listening and wants to, so wants to fight us on it. It's incredibly Christmassy. So do we want to give kind of like general thoughts about it or do we want to save that to the end on this movie? We give general thoughts, but we're going to do the ratings the same way at the right, end. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah um, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want, I want to highlight about the movie. I mean, we covered we covered a, a good general gist of it. I w- I want to highlight <laughs> real quick um, when we meet the polka guys and John Candy's character. Oh, yeah. uh, that's so polka, funny. Polka, polka. <laughs> forgot about, I forgot about John Candy. He's like, we're big in Sheboygan. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> you you could just, polka. you could feel, you could, as, as kind as this man is, you could feel the frustration when he's mm-hmm. just rambling about his whole life. Yeah. <laughs> We I'm had sorry. a few big hits. I just thought you would have, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you say you could help me? Anyway, I'm rambling here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is an interesting theme of Home Alone is just terrible parents. You know, <laughs> obviously Kevin's parents are terrible. Um, the old man, he's disconnected from his son. Um, and then John Candy goes through the whole list of like his, like the whole band. <laughs> yeah. And some of it's pretty bad. Yeah. I don't have many other notes other than twelve dollars for pizza in the nineties. That seems excessive. In the nineties, twelve dollars for pizza? Was it was it different in Chicago? I don't know how Chicago d- handles things. Twelve dollars for pizza in the nineties? That's like yeah, but didn't he get like a large pizza? I feel like a large pizza now is like I don't know. Was it? Was 20, it twelve? $20. Was it twelve or was it ten? Well, I did the math. It was for eleven. When they, when they order the when they order the ten pizzas, right? So it's almost like twelve bucks a pizza, which seems like a lot. But they well, do get well, toppings. He, they do. He say orders it. one pizza, and he it's a, like eleven sixty or something. Oh, okay. That's, but that's a, like so much for a that's pizza a cheese in the pizza, 90s. though. Yeah, that was yeah. thirty years ago. I mean, I'm I, being I, serious. No, no, he, no. He's right because I remember when I worked at the pizza at the pizzeria by my house. I mean, that was eleven bucks for a large pie. That was yeah. When you worked uh, there, yeah. I mean, years later, was, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, 
So that's 20, 20 plus years later. I don't fucking rich people pizza, I guess. Well, it is weird that the total. First off, they say it in the opening scene. Um, because I I think the I forget who I, I forget who says it. They say for pizza, and he says, "How many pizzas they get? Like ten or twelve? Ten. Yeah, ten, ten pizzas. Okay, yeah, ten pizzas, twelve dollars a pop or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I but think his dad says it. But it's weird because some some do have have toppings, so that increases. Yeah, I so guess it's, that's true. It's like, but it's but it's weird that Kevin's is almost twelve dollars, and it's yeah, just cheap. Unless he gets extra cheese, I guess that counts as a topping. Mm. Um, yeah, um, we didn't really talk about the movie that he watches. Yeah, that was made which for is the film, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, I, remember, with I remember, Phil. I remember, I remember the second one more. Sorry, not to bring it up. I remember the movie, this movie, and the second one more. Really? Because he does that whole sequence, and he's like, "Get on your knees and tell me you love me." I still remember <laughs> it more in this one because he uses and then, it, and then he goes, and then he's like. <laughs> Tim Curry's like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I still, but I still remember it in the first one more because it's used like three times. Yeah, in the movie. he uses it a lot. Yeah, and let's talk let, real quick. Uh, another thing I want to highlight: the sound system this kid has. Oh my god, <laughs> when he's playing it, not even when he uses the firecrackers the one time. The other time, I mean, he just turns the volume up, and you're outside the house, and it is mm-hmm. echoing in the neighborhood. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, that poor pizza guy didn't deserve that. He's just doing a fucking job, Aww. Kevin. Fuck off. Yeah. Well, he did ruin he did ruin the statue. He maybe deserved it a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. I don't know. Kevin's kind of a disease. <laughs> so yeah, just general thoughts. I liked it. I liked There's it too. that. Yeah, it's good. I have a I good always, time. Yeah, I always enjoy it. Um Colin, when was the last time you watched this? Do you watch it every year or every pretty much every year, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I always like this film. Um, very enjoyable. If I will say, if, if um, Harry and Marv weren't in it, yeah. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern, I I don't think I would really care for this film. Um, That's but, why, like the the ones after the second one, like the third and the fourth, no one gives a shit. Exactly, because you don't you don't have a good su- supporting cast. I mean, oh know. wow, French Stewart, get out of here. Yeah, no good. So, the that's mainly the reason I I I love these films. Um, and good good Christmas Christmas feel. Oh, I love the end. It's so sweet. When when the shovel guy is like hugging his son, it gets me every time. See, I wish it was a I wish it was a little sadder, Michelle. I wish it was a little sadder. I would have liked it more. <laughs> no, it's very sweet. Yeah. We even talk about like the, the soundtrack. Like, there's so many Christmas songs. That's, they yeah. just put all the Christmas Iconic. songs in this movie. Well, mm-hmm. you got and you got John Williams got John doing Williams. the score. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a question for um. That's something I think we'll have to compare for Elf. Uh, the the music in in these two movies. Um, but yeah, do we want to yeah. do we want to move into Elf? Yeah, yes. Let's go right okay. into it. All right. So uh, just in case you're not aware of Elf, if you've never seen it before, I also wrote a little intro um for this movie. Elf is the story of a bastard child named Buddy who is kidnapped by Santa Claus, brainwashed into a cult, raised in a labor camp, and then forced to meet unrealistic production goals, all while not being paid a cent. When comrade Buddy finds out that he isn't an elf, though, he flees from Santa's clutches and makes a daring escape to New York City, where he finds the most stereotypically New York man is his father, Sonny Corleone. You ever want to watch half an, an hour and a half of Will Ferrell make an ass out of himself? Watch any Will Ferrell movie, but if you want to see him do it in tights, this is the holiday classic for you. I mean, what more could you want in a Christmas movie? We've got montages. We've got creepy shower singing. We've got montages. We've got Andy Richter talking about Pete. We've got montages. We've got Peter Dinklage before he was super famous. We've got montages. So many damn montages that I thought I was watching an episode of Better Call Saul. And if you thought that premise for this movie was unrealistic, just wait until you see another John Favreau film called Chef, where John Favreau not only dates Scarlett Johansson, but Sofia Vergara as well. And I thought Mary Steenburgen singing was the most visceral reaction I could have to a Favreau movie. But without further delay, let's discuss this giant man-child named Buddy running and screaming around New York City in Elf. Yeah, that about sums up. That's good. <laughs> so, Sonny Corleone. So, Michelle, you said... 
when this came out, it kind of took the throne over Home Alone, and this became your every year watch. Yep, I think it took the throne. We watched two movies every year, Elf and It's a Wonderful Life, and Elf is just... I I love Elf, man, and I was excited to rewatch it. I mean, I watch it every year, so I know it pretty well. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of good memories with this film, and it's such a warm movie to watch. Yeah, and I don't... And it's funny. I don't really hear anyone minus minus a few for every hundred i hear like two really say anything negative about this i mean this is a you know i guess i guess the way home alone was was a big favorite in the 90s this was a favorite in the 2000s um hence why we kind of wanted to match these two up but yeah warm and cozy movie and it's i mean for christmas especially it's i mean it doesn't get more it doesn't get Christmas more Christmassy than this. Um, I honestly don't remember watching this as much as a little kid. I'll, I'll be honest. Like when it came out, I watched it, but I watched it more as I got older. I think, um, which is which. I don't know if that's. I don't know if that's normal. I don't know if people watch this as much as a kid. I think I was still watching Home Alone more as a little kid. But yeah, Colin. Colin? Ha- I- <laughs> Off, aw- awfully quiet over there. Yeah, really quiet. I hate this movie. I know. Oh. It. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm absolutely what? kidding. No, I'm oh, joking. I was, I'm oh joking. My God. I was waiting for it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I probably. This is probably the second, the movie, like the Christmas movie I've watched the second most in my life. Um, the first being a Christmas story because I would watch a Christmas story, not during Christmas time. <laughs> I would just watch that movie all year round. Um, I know that sounds weird, but I would do it. But Elf was definitely like, uh, so I was what? This came out in 2003. So I think I was nine when this came out. So probably since 2003, it's a staple in the house. It's the one that I think I watched like the most during the holiday season, just because it's always on TV. Like it's constantly, it's on like a thousand channels. It seems like, but yeah, I, I, I've seen, I've seen this movie a lot, and it was interesting to see how starkly different it is from Home Alone. Like, I feel like when people think of Christmas movies, they all kind of think, you know, oh, they all kind of have like the same feel to them. Watching these two movies, like, uh, they're, <laughs> I think they're very different, like shockingly different. Like, especially with the pacing. Elf it, elf moves really fast, I think. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it moves so, so fast. Way faster than Home Alone, for sure. Do you like, like, which one is it? Would you say it's more of a positive or is it kind of weird for Elf versus Home Alone? Um, I don't know. It, it's. I guess it depends on the movie because obviously, you know, pacing is important. But in a movie like this, I don't find it um as distracting um yeah i wouldn't say it's distracting at all um <laughs> i did notice for the first time all of the montages though <laughs> that i never noticed before <laughs> there's so many montages <laughs> it kind of blew my mind every time a montage like started in the, <laughs> in the movie i was like wait another one <laughs> what's going on <laughs> but no i don't think it's i had a reaction at the end of this movie that I want to save to the end. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I really enjoy it. This is one of those movies where, I mean, I feel like it's the same for Home Alone, but this one even more so. When the credits come up at the end, I I don't really know where the time went. It goes so quick. Um, maybe that's because of how, how quickly it's, it's paced. I don't know. But, um, you know, you have those movies where, it doesn't feel like an hour and a half. It just kind of zooms by. No. no? Yeah, it, it's, it moves. Yeah, it definitely oh, moves. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so um, let, let's appreciate let's appreciate the, the, um, the title work, the credits in this movie. I mean, it's like even that. I mean, there's, 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 a, whole, there's a whole world that John Favreau really creates, and it's, and it's really – I can't think of many Christmas movies, um, at least – I mean, I, yeah, I really can't think of many that really 
um, kind of capture that Christmas feel as much as Elf does. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love the North Pole in this. It's so... Because yeah. it kind of plays on those classic tropes and, like, especially, like, the claymation stuff. Um, but it's yeah. so quaint, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, everything's white, and they're making, like, Etch-A-Sketches, right? And it's kind of like, you know, what kid in 2003 is getting an Etch-A-Sketch, right? But uh, it it's just seems so quaint and so quirky and... I don't know. They mix it. They have, and they kind of play with that, like with more like quote, like modernized things. Like, uh, like when they're going through the, all of the pictures, like, like the whole montage of him being (laughs) too big. And there's the picture of him playing basketball and just dunking on all the elves and stuff. Um, and like him being in the shower, like I didn't know that elf showered, but I guess they do. And he's too big for the shower. He's trying to splash the water on his face. (laughs) But I am glad that they just kind of go through him like, oh, haha, ha, he's big. They kind of just do it in like one little sequence and then that's it. You know, like they don't really dwell on that because it would have gotten old. It would have gotten really old real fast if that was like the whole movie. Yeah. yeah. And rather than like kind of focus on it, you just see like sometimes just how, how, how big he is. Like they don't really, it's not like in your face all the time, but um you know what? You know, what kind of confused me. So all these elves are making these sim- simplistic toys for kids. You know, all these bats and and etch a sketches and dolls and stuff. Jack in the box. You know, what's what bothers me is that they're spending all year making these toys, and it's it's a lot of the same toys. When Santa has this bag that clearly. It's just, I mean, it's a magic bag. Anything, whatever a the kid wants, he just board. yeah, he pulls out a huff board. I know the elves didn't make a huff board, eh. so clearly that just appeared there. So that, these elves are that, just okay. That, let's get into this because Santa he picks up Buddy, right? Buddy slips into his bag. Santa comes back. He's like, "Great work, everyone. Now it's time to get started on next Christmas." Give him a break, Santa. You can't. Yeah. They work. They're working their fingers off, three hundred sixty-five days a year. They and need some. What? They need some. Listen. They need some literature. They need to learn about workers' rights. These elves need to unionize. Okay. Yeah. Because Santa is a bad boss. Just saying it. Do you think? I mean, they're working every day, day and every night. There's got to be some injuries. Do you think Santa has workers' comp? No, they don't have health care. <laughs> yeah. You think they have a health care plan? If they get hurt, they they get sent to go making shoes at night. How Affleck does. I love what they say in the beginning, which I don't think I've ever caught before. I don't know why. When he's like, elves only have three jobs. They make shoes at night, or they make cookies in a tree, or they build toys, which is so weird. Like, such a weird, like... I would take the cookies any day. Yeah, but not during dry yeah. season. Because <laughs> that's when it gets lit on fire. <laughs> I know, I know. They call making toys for Santa the show, which is pretty funny. I like, I like when they show when they show the um the tree. Yeah. And it catches on fire, and you just hear one of the little elves say, "Hey." <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna talk about the one who like, I want to make shoes. No. no, just as soon as it sparks up a flame, you just hear, "Hey." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we need to talk about the casting in this movie, though, because, I mean, like, there's some good casting in Home Alone, right? Like, that's not, you know, but you get Bob Newhart, like, right off the bat, come on. You get mm-hmm. Ed Asner as, as Santa. You get, obviously, Will Ferrell, but James Caan, Mary Steenburgen. Um, you, get, you get Peter Billingsley from Home Alone. Ralphie himself is in it for a quick little bit. Uh, Zoe De Chanel, obviously. Um, am I forgetting anyone big? Did I hit everyone? All the ones I can think uh, of. Yeah. Peter oh, 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 oh um, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, Pink- Peter Dinklage. Yeah. Andy yep. Richter. Andy Richter. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, don't forget even... Kyle Gass. Do you guys remember Kyle Gass? No. Mm. Uh, Jack Black's partner in Tenacious D, his band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. He's the other writer. He's the he's the tribe of asparagus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean going back and watching like 
obviously I watch this a bunch every year, but there are always, I don't know, it seems like one of those movies where I always pick up on a different joke or like something else that's just funny. This time I watched it and it, I didn't like pick up on it. Like um, when they're trying to list things, the good things about Buddy, um, <laughs> and they and they're talking about how he how they he changed the smoke alarm the batteries in the smoke alarm and the guy stands up and he goes sure did triple A's and I'll have to check them again in six months won't he <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the so fact funny. that he says sure did triple A's like that has any bearing <laughs> on anything <laughs> it's anything, so funny. funny. Yeah, like our AAA is supposed to be harder. They're smaller, they're so just, yeah, yeah. That would be harder for him. Yeah, sure did triple A's. And oh, even oh, like let the me... wet. Yeah. No, 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 go ahead. No, I was gonna say there's just so many great li- like line reads in this, like uh, when yeah. they cut when they cut to uh, Walter uh, take he's taking first off he's taking the books back, which is weird because they missed their payments. He's taking it from. <laughs> But they're the not even children love the I, books. The way she says it, but the children love the books. <laughs> but even the fact that he's taking the books back, like that's not a real thing. <laughs> they can stop <laughs> distributing the books, but he's repossessing the books. Hey, you it's teach, just, it's just like how lesson. like yeah. how like naughty he really is that he's repossessing books. Yeah. He's like, okay. I know what you're doing. You're trying to make yep, me feel yep. bad. That's yeah. that's that's a great line. <laughs> <laughs> and he's right too. He's right. I I see what you're doing here. You're, you're trying to make yeah. me feel bad. <laughs> when yeah. in actuality, you're the one that missed the payments. <laughs> yeah. He's he's so New York. <laughs> he's um, the most New York man I've ever seen in a movie. I think. Let me ask you guys this: Did you guys try spaghetti and syrup? No. You, you I had try- to have at some point, but I this don't movie to make you want to try it. Specifically trying no. it. Because oh, they I'm... play it like it's gross. Have you but tried it? Absolutely, I tried it. As soon as I saw this, I, I tried it. How is it? And guess what? It is not as bad uh, as you probably think. Oh. And guess what? I tried it with buttered pasta, and I tried it with sauce. Oh. That's oh right. Oh, my God. That's right. And it's not that disgusting. I've had grosser things. Did and you put, like, more? Did you ever put... Like pop tarts and little marshmallows and all those things. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't go that uh-huh. far. I'll have to do that though. Like yeah, I said, really at some gross. point, I will have to do that. It's it's really not though because <laughs> it really is with all of the, the pop tarts and the candy. Oh, it's oh, disgusting. Uh, no, that is. But I'm just talking about the syrup. It's the sauce that gets me. Like I feel like yeah, sauce. Was, I was nervous about that one, and I will say, it wasn't as bad as I really thought it would be. Uh, I mean, the butter pasta, like the plain pasta, you can kind of imagine it's not really that terrible. Yeah, I could see just, that. But the sauce, yeah, it was shockingly not terrible. I wonder what it would taste like now because that was when I was probably 10, 10, 11. Um, and it's weird because when I had it, I was like, okay. I mean, they really act repulsed by this. I mean, when the mom takes a bite, you know, you could see the disgust in her face. And I'm like, it's not terrible. It doesn't taste like garbage. It's literally pasta and a little sweet syrup. That's it. And Buddy just makes it look delicious. So, you know. Have you ever... We can cut this. Have you ever been invited to someone's house and they ask you if you'd like to try some biscotti and then it turns into worms on your plate? (laughs) What? Wait, I actually get the joke now. (laughs) Because I finally seen it. I say, eat some (laughs) biscotti. It took me a second. <laughs> it's from what we do in the shadows, Michelle. The movie. Oh. <laughs> the movie is, I think it's Deacon. He's like, he's like, why did you eat some biscotti? <laughs> we says it. So funny. Yeah. So we can cut uh, back in now. Um, yeah, that and pasta. Then he, he, he chugs the soda. <laughs> oh, man. so good. First, he just goes, do you hear that? I thought that was one of the funniest <laughs> lines ever when I was a kid. Yeah. Do you hear that? You so hear that? funny. Honestly, I wish he kind of said it like that. Like, when he says it, he says it kind of loud. Did you hear that? I wish he kind of <laughs> said it like, like really subtle. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, we're kind of off the off track here, so let's let's redirect Let's talk okay. about Buddy. He finds out he's a human, right? And then um, Santa gives him some very 
very wise advice um, <laughs> about New York and <laughs> about what a peep show is. Um, <laughs> oh, the one joke that I don't get that's kind of like seeped into, I think, the pop culture like zeitgeist um, that I don't think is funny. I didn't think it was funny as a kid was when he's leaving and then Mr. Norwal comes up and he goes, bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. And he goes, bye, Mr. Norwal. I don't. I don't get that. That joke like doesn't land for me at all. Oh, I never thought it was a joke. I just thought it was kind of sweet. Yeah, I didn't think it was a joke. I th- it's yeah. supposed to be a joke, right? Is, is, I don't I think so. I thought it was. I think because that's what he the is. The only and joke his name is, is just that. like I don't know. Yeah, just his voice is kind of funny, and that's it. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> yeah, but like everyone has done that voice a million times since it came out. Like I don't know. Yeah, I don't think people quote that because of. The joke. I think people just yeah, like it. Yeah, I think it's yeah, the voice. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But, you know. He's, his little mouth, I mean, it's, it's adorable. Yeah, it is. What is funnier to me is when he's making his trek along all the way to New York, and then he gets into the Lincoln Tunnel, and then he's <laughs> up against the wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so scared. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Like things like that really hit for me. Like you can do like the fish out of water stuff. Like it, like it's easy to kind of dismiss that, but you really have to sh- like you really have to pick specific things that are funny, you know. And and he has to act them out. Like him taking the flyers from the guys, and he just keeps taking them and keeps taking them and keeps taking them. Like every time he takes some, is funnier and funnier. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, I love when he goes into the copy shop and he's like, "Congratulations." <laughs> World's greatest <laughs> coffee. <of the> coffee. <gasps> oh, it's so good. I like when he's uh when he's eating the cotton balls, um, and <laughs> and then he gets yeah. and then and then he gets his prick and he, after he like screams he just goes like this oh and he just looks at John Favreau with like <laughs> such shock. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I mean, there's so many moments. When he's, when he's, and to this day, when sometimes I'll just, the, uh, the white lines on the street, sometimes I'll just jump on the white lines, you know? Oh yeah. I absolutely do the, the escalator thing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm flexible enough for that. I just do it. Imagine if Michelle do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not to the extent he does, but sometimes. Oh my sometimes God. I'll can we it. talk about the store manager? Yes, we can. Is he not yeah, the funniest please. guy in the world? Because <laughs> if I go down, we're all going down. <laughs> Channel three. Santa's so got good. a brand new bag. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, six inch ribbon curls, honey. That's impossible. Six <laughs> inches. Wait, all right. Can, all right. That's something I never understood. Can you guys explain that to me? What? The six inch he, ribbon curls? How do you, I, I don't know. He just wants them like longer. Yeah. Why is like that he, I guess he wants like the start of the curl to go like six inches down. Yeah. But she's like, I, I don't know if she doesn't, like she can't do it, I guess. So, yeah. And then he's like, he just dismisses her. He's like six inches. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys, have you guys checked the place out? It's good. It's a little too good. <laughs> but someone's off my job. <laughs> I know. He's so funny. <laughs> Nice. And then when he's Santa later in the movie, and he's like, "Oh, oh," and he's like staring Buddy down. Oh, the luck! <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the, oh man. The, oh, we the, forgot about Artie Lang plays Santa in this. He's the ball Santa. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird. I like when when Buddy gives the Santa a little sniff. You stink. <laughs> you smell like beef and cheese. You don't smell like Santa. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> so gross. What are you talking about? I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, yeah, his well, voice. if you're Santa, what song did I sing to you? Uh, like happy that? birthday, of course. I Damn think it. the funniest part in that for me is um, is when he just looks at him, let the kid talk. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <clears throat> that sequence really kind of like, I think it's one of the more famous like parts mm-hmm. of the whole movie. I'm a fake? I just like to be dead. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Uh. Oh man, it's so good. Oh, when I was a kid, this movie, I genuinely had goals to work in a mailroom because of this movie. I wanted to work in a mailroom so badly. I was like, that looks so cool. 
the thing that they shoot up the I mean it looks fun yeah I awesome. I don't I, I probably didn't share that with you I, I just didn't like how it looked in there um, everyone looked like it, he, they did want to hurt him and it did look dark and dingy I maybe wanted to play with the thing a couple times and that'd be good yeah yeah <laughs> not a whole shift <laughs> <laughs> I love when they're drinking and he's like you're my best friend. That's it. You're my best friend. And then the guy he's drinking with is like, I'm 26. Yeah, uh, what have I done? 26? Yeah. That man is like 50 years yeah. old. <laughs> I wonder how old that guy actually is. Did anyone I, anyone uh, look up how old I he was? I didn't look it up. No. no. <laughs> he's definitely not 26. He was definitely not 26. Guys, he might be. <laughs> that's Come on. That's no way. The secretary is Deborah, right? Yeah. Um, Do you... Did you catch her conversation when she's introduced? She's declawing a cat. She's, she's like, like, I don't I've, know if I could declaw a cat. She's like, I've never Eight? declawed t- kittens before. All right, we'll bring them over. <laughs> like, what <laughs> is this lady's do. life? No, I won't charge. You. Yeah, like, what does she do? I know. Outside what is her work? side hustle? <laughs> she work at a circus? Or I don't know. I, I will say I can see for people who don't like this movie, I think it comes down to whether you like Will Ferrell or not. Because he's a lot in this movie. He's so good. Yeah. He's a lot in it. And if you don't like Will Ferrell, then I get why you don't like this movie. But that's the thing. I feel like there are a couple people that like Will Ferrell sometimes, and they don't care for this movie as much anymore. Like I, I feel like I feel like people that don't like this movie liked it at one point, and they've just gotten yeah, tired of it. It's been overplayed. It's played a million times. From like November first yeah. I mean, to, to like the end of December, yeah. and I don't get sick of it, but I get, I guess I get why people might s- stop liking it. There are there are movies like that for me that I just get sick of. Um, this one isn't one of them. I I find it you know pure enjoyment because when I want a Christmas movie, I want one that really, really like captures that feel, and this this one this one hits the nail on the head. Yeah. yeah. Um. I like how Buddy really endears himself to, like, everyone he meets, um, except for Walter until the end, which is kind of like, that's kind of nice. Like, you know, his 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 half brother, you know, comes around on him once they, you know, they they do the snowball fight with the bullies and stuff. And and Mary Steenburgen's character, she's like all excited to meet him and she's trying to be so nice. She's talk about like. By the way, she's mothers. 14 years older than Will Ferrell, and she's played his, like, mom or, like, mother character in two different movies. What the fuck? People, come on. She can't sing, though. Cer- <laughs> certainly can't sing. Nope. Um, she's no Zoe. Let me let me just make a side note. So, um, the guy, the um, guy from the mailroom, in Elf, he was 45 years old. <laughs> Yeah, that's about. Wow. <laughs> Seems about what I was thinking. Yeah, I was cutting the guy a little slack. I mean, I didn't think twenty six, but I didn't think almost fifty. I mean, I'm man. So young. I'm twenty six. Twenty uh, six. No, I got. I'm I got to get out of the flow. That's my problem. <laughs> uh, how do we feel about Buddy and? Uh, oh my God, I'm running Jovi. About that relationship. I love it. I, I do love how she like. He, he kind of like takes her around New York City and shows her like a completely different, you know, perspective on it. Like that's kind of like, oh, that's kind of a clever way to understand why she's into him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's so sweet. I will say this. Um, this is one of the Zoe films I like her in a little bit more than other things I've seen her in. I love Zoe Deschanel. I know a lot of people. She's incredible in The Happening. <laughs> Incredibly bad. <laughs> Maybe like the worst I acting she performance I've seen. Oh, she's but, oh, that's man. one of the worst. She's worse than Mark Wahlberg in that movie, which is like, wait, she's how worse? is that possible? I, I literally just watched the movie a year ago. I can't. I guess that's how much I forget about her. She's terrible. Wow. Um, I love when he goes, "My tongue swells up when I'm around you." <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines. Yeah, she's she's there. I think she's a little bit more sweet in this movie rather than focusing on being quirky, which I know is her, yeah. is her big thing. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe that's what they that, Maybe that's why I like her a little bit more in this. Um, still not the biggest fan. Um, she's but, also got a little edge when you meet her, though. You know, she does. She's like, she's mm-hmm. like, stop staring at me. 
because that's creepy. She is right. That is she is. I like when she calls him over after like they have the shower scene. She calls him over like she's disciplining a child. (laughs) It's it's very scary. It's very scary when I see that. Hey you. (laughs) Yep. Come over over here. here. (laughs) I didn't know you were naked. He really like he, he, does he really know gets that out she's of that. naked. He knows that she's naked. He's take we as we established earlier in the movie, he has taken showers before. Yeah, he I knows about showers. So, so I don't think it's really a, I think he's he blocks out everything because he's so drawn to her voice, you know? So I don't think he really cares about anything in the world except I think he cares. Maybe. <laughs> he maybe talks he about how beautiful she is. Think that other people care about it. Like uh. But he, Buddy might not like what a woman looks like beyond the face, you know? It might could it might scare him, you know? Does he know? Oh, it yeah. probably does scare him. You're right. Yeah. I agree with that aspect of it. He really gets out of that real fast. When she, <laughs> so when she, easily. When she disciplines yeah. him. <laughs> I forget I forget how it um how he how he gets out of it. It's, I know he says um no 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 it's not when he says I think you have the most beautiful voice in the world. Is it, don't they talk about the decorations? Yeah, they like transitions into that. Yeah, she's like she's like they're kind of pissed about this. Yeah, yeah, I forget who I forget how they how they just like drop the. Um, I think because she asked him like what he was doing there so early, and he tells her while yeah. I was up doing yep. all of this, up all night doing all this. Oh yeah, I think he asks her first. Yeah, because she's like her water is out or something, or they shut mm-hmm. off the water to her apartment. It's really funny that there's a shower in a department store. <laughs> I guess like a uh, like a big one like that in New York City kind of makes sense. Yeah. Like like that has so That's many nice. different stores in it. That is nice. Oh, we got to talk about um Miles Finch. Let's, we we I mean, do need to we do need yeah. to talk about oh, Miles yeah. Finch. <laughs> What's he call him? Hey, Jackweed or or, <laughs> Jack, or something. <laughs> More action in a week than you've gotten in your entire life. Where 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 does he have houses? Uh, Paris. Um, I don't remember where he has I don't remember. houses. Three, three places, he three extravagant places, but yeah. each with a seventy-inch plasma screen. Green. <laughs> you feeling strong, my friend? Call me Elf one more time, and then and then he like he gestures. It, yeah. Uh, he's he's great. I I I love Peter Dinklage. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's. And obviously, as a kid, I'd never seen him in anything else. Like, I yeah, had, like you know. I know. I probably didn't see him in anything else from, like, that until Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He isn't in Bruges, though. He's really good in Bruges. Just shout out if you're looking for a, a movie to watch. And in Bruges is, takes place during the winter, right? Yeah, it's almost Christmassy. There's, like, yeah, a, there's, there's, there's Christmas choir things, stuff. It? Yeah, Christmas yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. I really want to see... Um, the station agent, he's in that. I heard it's really good. So if you if you're looking for another, um, not so much talked about Peter Dinklage movie, check that one. He's out too. in Seinfeld. I don't remember. Oh, is he, he is a voice role only in Seinfeld. He plays a the uh, wake up guy for Elaine's wake up service. Oh, okay. That flirts with her. He's like, <laughs> he's talking. He says like, what's a what's a woman with a sexy voice like you getting up so early or something like that. <laughs> so Peter Dinklage. John Favreau, who else is in Seinfeld? Wait, no. Everyone's wait. in Seinfeld. That's the rule. Everyone's in yeah. Seinfeld. Wait, is, is John Favreau in Seinfeld? Yes, he's the clown. Okay. That George pushes down when there's a fire. <laughs> yeah, I guess every actor known to man was in Seinfeld um, at least once. The if we go back to Home Alone, the um when she calls the cop, the family crisis guy. He plays the the guy they cast as Kramer for the pilot. Oh yeah, he's in oh, a bunch of stuff. He's in like Friends. He's in Breaking Bad. He's in like everything. But yeah, he's the one that steals the raisins. <laughs> he's actually the he's the TV show version of Kevin Bacon. He's just in everything. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got? Um, the snow snowball the snowball fight's great. Snowball fight's so great. good. We haven't really mm-hmm. talked about the relationship between Walter and Buddy too much, though. Um, uh, yeah, when he yells at him in the cons from... It's when, just heartbreaking. When he's just... I mean, he's an asshole to Buddy the whole time, which I, I guess makes sense because Buddy does come off as deranged. But he's, like, the only one to not warm up to Buddy until, the like, the very end. 
Now let me ask you guys this: If Miles That's when Finch, his other son comes in with a spanking, spanks his dad, <laughs> being like, "Hey, dad, stop being an asshole." When when Miles Finch, like, all right, if you were his dad, right, and Miles Finch, you know, comes into your office, giving you the opportunity of a lifetime, and you know, let's say Buddy walks in and just completely ruins that, how would you react? Maybe he takes it a little far, but yeah, you'd be pissed. Yeah. So yeah. it's not completely uncalled for. No, no his, it's not his, like Kevin's family. Yeah, his like anger is justified why. there. Yeah, yeah, you understand yeah. why he's like weary about this 30-year-old man just coming yeah. in and ruining his life. It's funny because when that happens, everyone else in the conference room is like kind of disappointed in, in Walter yeah, for, for that. taking that's, it that that's, far. That's family movie nonsense. Yeah. Like, th- th- they benefit just as much as he does from Miles Finch, and so they honestly be more pissed than his father would I think like they'd be on his side even more um, uh, there was uh, there's a really fu- oh when um, I love I love Walter's boss too I think I think he's really funny minus eight <laughs> that does not happen <laughs> he's really funny for the l- a little amount that he's in uh, <laughs> um, when when he's when he's giving his speech and um and he's and he's just being so unreasonable. I flew in here. <laughs> I forget <laughs> what he says exactly to hear this pitch, and I intend to. Son, you'll have to wait. <laughs> uh, don't don't talk to my son like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to keep your job, you will give me this pitch now. <laughs> I love when he just just goes under his breath, up yours, and then he walks out. Yeah. And then the kid's like, "Yeah, up yours." <laughs> yeah, that's. I love. <laughs> I love when they're sitting at dinner and um, uh, Walter comes in and he's like, I'm going to go work in my room. I've got a bunch of stuff to do. And she's like, oh, okay. And then the kid's like, can I eat in my room? She goes, no. And he goes, why not? I've got a bunch of homework to do and I got so much work to catch up. Like he does, like, the, 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 so like he impersonates him. I'm way behind on a bunch of homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, the up yours part is good. Mm, yeah. Up yours. <laughs> Yeah, up yours. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Hobbs. Hobbs. Yeah. You walk out that door. You walk out of here. Hey, you're finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he has like a heart attack halfway through. He's saying that. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, it's kind of sad that the movie ends with Walter getting a fucking shot at a toll booth a million times by machine guns, though. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, what are you, a, gonna do? you wouldn't expect that in a, in oh, a wholesome God. Christmas movie, but uh, yeah, you know, it really hit home. Shit happens you know in New York. Y- you know what's <laughs> crazy? Um, so he, so James Caan, aka Sonny Corleone from The Godfather, plays Will Ferrell's dad in this movie. Robert Duvall, aka Tom Hagen from The Godfather, plays Will Ferrell's dad in Kicking and Screaming. So that's something to think about. For, forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot. I, I forgot about Robert Duvall and kicking. And, actually, I forgot about kicking yeah. and screaming. I actually yeah, always do. Yeah, that's true. That yeah, that's 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 fair. It's not as memorable as Elf, um, which I and, think Elf was kind of like. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say Robert Duvall also plays Vince Vaughn's dad in another Christmas movie, Four Christmases, and you know Vince Vaughn and John Favreau are buddies, and you know. John Favreau is also in Four Christmases. Yeah, James and- <laughs> Caan uh, fucks uh, Vince Vaughn in Swingers. <laughs> I have to see Sing- Swingers again. I haven't seen that in a while. But I mean, the the whole ending of um, like I I love the way that they set up like uh, why Santa's sleigh doesn't doesn't fly in the beginning and why they need this piece of technology and then santa they all you know buddy sees santa trash in central park which th- that narrative about the central park rangers hating santa claus <laughs> it's so funny so yeah those central park rangers are scary yeah oh was, my gosh i was gonna ask you guys how you felt about the sleigh i kind of like it uh, like the I like it. um the engine they have to get um, puts a nice like re- like put puts a bit of realism in the world of of Santa, which I like. Yeah, and how they kind of flip it on their head because at the end the engine comes off anyway. Well, they need you know Christmas cheer and yeah Christmas spirit and yeah, it's oh, enough man. for just a couple of New Yorkers whose hearts are frozen cold 
And then when it comes along, and they they're gonna be singing a song. Baby. Yeah, when their sleigh, <laughs> when their sleigh starts starts flying and the music starts playing, oh, that music really hits. So sweet. Oh, when I was little, something I never caught, and this is probably me being dumb. I'm sure every other person caught up on this. Um, Walter's Walter's previous wife, but uh, Buddy's mom. I never put it together that that wasn't the current his current wife. I thought that was like the same, like the, the picture. <laughs> oh, I, were they I, married? I thought they just like. Oh yeah, ma- yeah, she, yeah. She had him yeah. and then mm-hmm. like gave him up or something. Yeah, I I just Jesus thought that was Jesus hates abortion. <laughs> yeah, so I never I never picked up on that until like later on in life. So I felt kind of yeah. silly. Yeah, I know. I'm not probably the only yeah. one. Well, I, when you're a kid, you don't understand, like, you yeah, know, yeah. wait, like, you don't have to be married to have kids, like, or you don't have to, like, yeah, I could see that, but, yeah. Um, what are, what are some other, like, any other parts that stick out, or funny parts? Um, I like when they're all singing along, and they cut back to the store, and the manager's like, come on, Santa! <laughs> so they sing it. The manager really steals, like, I feel like he really steals the movie. Every scene he's in is gold. He's so yeah, funny. He's... The way he walks is funny. The way he talks is funny. Like, he's so, like, in a huff, and he's always, like, he when is. he spots and... him, picking out the, the, the thing, the, mm-hmm. the <laughs> looking at I, the, the lingerie. I, down here, yeah. I'm try- <laughs> that guy's always in stuff, but he's always such a small character. Um, Like, I remember seeing this shitty movie uh, another another john favreau vince vaughn you know duo in couples retreat it's really bad but i remember he's in that and oh that's him yeah yeah that movie sucks that's really bad <laughs> that's really bad but he's he's still pretty funny in it that's another thing john favreau is in a lot he's he's honestly he's similar to paul giamatti i never realized paul giamatti was in everything until I got older. Like, Paul Giamatti's in a lot of movies. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing with um, John C. Riley. Man, John C. Riley used to be, a, like, a dramatic actor. <laughs> yeah. He, well, he's... Honestly, he's still in a lot. Yeah. Like, it's weird to think that he was in Gangs of New York. I forget about that. He's in all these, like, big, d- dramatic roles. He's really good in For the Love of the Game with Kevin Costner. Um, he plays his catcher. Um, he's really good in that. Now, this isn't your bias because it's a sports movie. <laughs> it probably <laughs> is, but he's he's also really good in it. That's also one of the lesser baseball movies for me, but it's still pretty good. I can't find this guy. Oh, oh, that's what I want to bring up. Oh, man. So we didn't really talk about music too much, but um, I love the music in this. Um, very jolly, very uplifting let me say this i don't know if you guys ever caught this and i don't know how you guys um are with polar express that's another really huge popular movie the track i think it's believe in polar express it's like one of the main themes of it it's identical to the elf theme for like a split for like a a, a little section yes i know exactly what you're, it is yeah. <laughs> exact and i wonder Sorry, if they Josh, got... I, I don't know any songs from polar express except for a hot Ha. Oh, we got. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I Honestly, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's. I wonder if they got any um any backlash from that because that is almost like completely plagiarized. I mean, I, I'm I have to listen to both tracks side to side, but it's I know it's at least a section of it is is identical. I remember I remember um I remember Lauren and I were watching Elf and she was like, "That's the Polar Express theme." And that's when I wasn't as familiar with Polar Express, and I was like, I was like, oh, all right. And I watched it. I was like, oh, holy shit! <laughs> this is uh, this is exact. And she loves Polar Express. That's that's her favorite. And I was like, hey, guess what? Polar Express came out after Elf, so I guess that's uh, something. So I guess that movie sucks. Uh, that's something Elf has over <laughs> Polar Express. So whatever. I, I I don't want to talk about the Polar Express too much, but the fucking the dead eyes of those people of all every character in that movie just. Creeps me out to no end. Very scary. Very, I very scary. Like, ugh, I can't. Yeah. Like, we, I'm sorry. There were other movies out <laughs> with this animation that were way better. Like, 
Toy Story 3 or Toy Story 2 was out before that movie. But you mm-hmm. have no excuse. Yeah, in my I book. Mean, yeah, I'm not going to dwell on Polar Monsters Express Inc. too much. Out, but <sighs> Yeah, I'm not going to dwell on it too much. I actually grew to like Polar Express more. I actually used to not like it when I was a kid. I still is, don't like it. You don't? I no. I actually I actually like it more now um, than I did before. Um Honestly, I'm very easy when it comes to Christmas movies. I'm like very lenient with them. And Polar Express is super cozy. I first saw it in fifth grade and I didn't like it, which is weird. But Michelle, you could say if you liked it or not, and then we can drop it. I liked it. I like it now, and I, I liked it then too. I like it. It's cozy. Cool. cool. Do I'm you easy like with that? Christmas movies too. Do you, Do you like that Finding Nemo came out a year before it? I do. Finding yeah. Nemo's animation and then look at Polar Express's animation. I like Come the on. creepy animation of Polar Express. I know it's oh, bad. I kind of like it. But I kind of like it too. It's it's terrifying. I don't honestly don't mm-hmm. know how they did it. It you got to you got to kind of look at how like, someone could be that bad at their job. It's, it's almost like the like, Ebenezer Scrooge that animated Disney Christmas Carol movie that they did. Like it's kind of like I don't know if you remember that one, but I, I don't. I've seen so many yeah, of them. I think it was like I, Jim Carrey is Ebenezer. It's oh freaky. yeah. yeah. I watched it for the first time last year. Yeah, that movie's gross. Still like it. <laughs> it's gross to look at. Um, this movie isn't gross to look at. It's pretty. It's pretty good. I like. I. I. You know. I think it's obviously it's John Favreau, so it's competently shot at the very least. Um, John Favreau is oh. a solid director, and and that's something yeah. I think gets forgotten about. Like he's he's pretty solid, and he's I, I, he's 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 an overall talent. I, I will say, and it's it's something I never realized until I got older. Yeah, guys, the the guy who wrote Elf also wrote Haunted Mansion. So <laughs> I thought Favreau wrote Elf. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Danny, or sorry, David. Danny Baron Zuko. Mm, close. No. <laughs> Danny Zuko. I could have sworn he wrote it. Oh well. Yeah. So it is also interesting. We didn't really touch on the director's. Because obviously Christopher Columbus also um, made a lot of, you know, he's made a lot of movies too. Not mm-hmm. the not the not the guy who committed genocide against the natives, the other Columbus. Um, yeah, right. Obviously, the first two Harry Potter movies, which some, which are always played during uh, Christmas time as well. Yeah, they're great around Christmas and November. I feel like Harry Potter's good in November. But he did the Night of the Museum, you know, and so. I guess what I'm getting to is if we're looking at these two movies compared to each other, right? Because that's what this is. This is a versus episode. And um, we've been pretty positive, I think, towards both of these movies. Um, do you remember how we did it last time? Did we pick a winner or did we just do scores? Uh, I think we just did scores and then decided who yeah. won once we mm-hmm. once we averaged it out. Um, yeah. I will say... These movies were much better than our Halloween movies. I'm sure the scores for at least Michelle will not reflect that, but these felt like real movies compared to those other two. <laughs> I'm sorry, they do Elf and Home Alone feel like real movies. <laughs> and those yeah. other two movies don't he's feel right. like They're real great. movies. Yeah, he's he's right. Yeah, that's um, fair. Do, do we have anything else to say on Elf before we give scores? No, Any, I think I... Anything, yeah. does anyone have any negatives they want to highlight? I don't, I mean... We didn't really talk about any any negative comments. It's fine if you don't. I think the Will Ferrell going around New York not knowing what things are can be a little annoying, especially if you've seen it a bunch. I don't know if that's the case for the first time. It's hard to go back into that mindset. I think if you've seen it a lot of times, you kind of pick up on which of those moments kind of fall flat and which ones, you know, are, are really funny. Um I'm just thinking, I don't know. I'm just thinking back now that he gets, when he gets hit by the taxi walking to Gimbal's and then later in the movie, he tells <laughs> Zoe Deschanel's character, be careful. The yellow ones don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of really, I don't know. They're set up and pay off for a lot of these jokes and, and plot points and everything. So it's, it's, I don't know. It's, I think it's hard to find a lot of really bad things about this movie <laughs> for me, at least. Yeah, it's it it has it has a motive and it and it and it succeeds in it very well. Um, like I mean, it's 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 a good Christmas movie and it does it doesn't really try to be anything more. But um, you have James Con and James Con's always great. Um, 
And I think that helps it a lot too. Yeah, he's he's good. I mean, he's I didn't ever think of him being like having comedic chops. I don't know if he was in any comedies other than what he's in silent movie. I don't know if you've seen the Mel Brooks movie, Silent Movie. No. Um, he's in that for a little bit. Uh, but when you think James Caan, I don't know if you go comedy. <laughs> so interesting role for him, and I think he kind of nails it. I think a lot of people nail it in this movie. Yeah. So does anyone want to – how do we want to do this ordering for – we'll start with Home Alone. Um, who wants I'll to go, go first. For, okay. All right. Yeah, I love Home Alone. Love it now. Love it then. I'm going to give Home Alone an 87. Oh, my God. Holy, that's so high. Holy shit. <laughs> yep. 87. I'm, well, when I'm you trying give Hocus to... Pocus an 84, you got to yeah. fucking give a real movie a higher I guess score. I know. Michelle's... I'm basing it off of that. <laughs> Michelle's ladder is only this up. Is... <laughs> I told you this was going to happen. You know that what? You're going to box yourself into a corner with that I high know. of a score for Hocus Pocus, and it has come to fruition. <laughs> whatever I, i'm only there's a holiday movie scale here okay so you reap what you sow or should i say yeah. you reap what you snow because it's yep. christmas time <laughs> so, exactly michelle that's interesting you said there's a holiday movie scale yeah this kind of changes everything is that is that what we're doing here what are we are we are we doing a holiday scale now <laughs> in my mind there's holiday scale Colin, is that oh, so Colin? You, you do what you will. Do what you will. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Whatever feels right, Josh. <laughs> all right. Um, shit. I mean, I almost feel like I'm really excited to hear Michelle's rating for Elf. I'll be honest. <laughs> but I'm going to get a fucking... Uh, Elf's going to get a 97. <laughs> Michelle's going to make... Colin, Michelle's going to make both of us look like assholes. Look, like, like we hate Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and it sucks because I liked both of these movies. I... I love both of these movies, and my rating will not reflect that. But I must tell all of you that my rating is not. Don't don't take it so seriously. Jeez. <laughs> um, I'll go next. Holman's gonna get a sixty-eight out of out of ninety-five. Josh, we're so close. Cool. Yeah, I, I said it. We're really close. I, I'm giving it a uh, uh, seventy out yeah. of ninety-four. Cool. Which honestly, I think that. Oh no 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 no. Never mind. Never mind. I think even. if you liked Kevin a little more, you would have bumped it up. I think so too. And honestly, yeah, that 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 that's does bring it down for me a I, little bit. Listen, I, I don't want to bring it up again, but that's what I'm saying. Second one, you know, you know, I think he's better in the second one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do think he has more. I think he has more cringy, serious moments in the second one, though. Maybe, but he's also just I think funnier. Like I think he has better comedic timing in the second one. Maybe. And it has Tim Curry. And how do you not give it a higher score if it has yeah. Tim Curry in it? I know. Well, listen, Joe Pesci, like, I mean, Tim, Tim Curry isn't in it as, as much as I wish he was. Yeah, but when he's in it, he's so good. I know. He's so good in everything ever. I do like I, I do like the tip part. I don't know if when... um Oh, uh, the Rob Schneider. Yep. <laughs> no tip? All right. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that part's good. But um, cool. So, yeah, these, these are solid ratings. I... It's kind. Of, it's kind of cheap. I mean, Christmas is gonna. I feel like get get some high ratings. I now have a question. Do we now hold off for Michelle's elf score to be last? You go for it. I'd like to hear it, guys. It's gonna be story. really high. <laughs> I'm waiting for Michelle to surprise us and and, and say elf, elf is, is a thirty three. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! I'm, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for another like perfect birthday score rating here. Well, then, then let's Josh. That's oh, okay. uh, what's your what's yeah, your maybe. elf score? I'm 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 still kind of toying with it. Um, I I I have. It. If you give me seven seconds, I will have it. <laughs> okay. Um, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Josh. Okay. All right. All right. That's enough. God. <laughs> <laughs> um, up yours. I'm gonna go hey, a up yours. Hey. seventy-five. Out of 95. Right. I'll go next because we're going to save Michelle's big score for last. We'll see. Um, I also thought this was better. Um, I, in fact, at the end, when Elf ended, I thought to myself, that was better than Home Alone. Like, because I watched Home Alone first. Um, and that was the first thought that popped into my head. So um, it's not like a crazy amount higher. I I'm giving it an 81 out of 94. All right. Everyone's making me look like an Ooh. asshole tonight. <laughs> no, I think, it's you a know, big jump. I don't think it's that big. 70 is a good score. 
No, that's a major points. award. No, I wasn't expecting Elf to get that's an eighty-one. That's a major award. Yeah. I will say this. I I think Elf is a like still a considerable amount better than Home Alone, and I feel like my two ratings it it almost seems closer than I feel. Like I, I feel like Elf is almost a lot better than Home Alone, but I kind of feel that way too. It it, it is. I, I but I I it, I felt weird giving Home Alone anything less than that, but I felt weird giving Elf higher than that you know it was kind of like in a weird spot but it is what it is let's let's let michelle make us all look like grinches okay yeah i also think elf is better but i don't think it, it's a perfect birth year i don't think it's well, an a plus rain or a, our christmas parade i know i'm sorry <laughs> i think i'm gonna give it an 89 oh wow that was, yeah. well, that uh, was underwhelming. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. I was disappointed actually. Expecting mm-hmm. an A. Are you? Yeah, give it a different score. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's rewind. Now I'd like to okay. give it. Now, Michelle, I just have to ask because I know your scale is is more on the enjoyment level. I really thought you enjoyed Elf a lot more than Home Alone. I'll be honest. With how you spoke, with how I like Elf more, but I also like Home Alone a lot. Okay, cool. Yeah, I definitely like Elf more. And I watch it more. Um, but I don't think Home Alone is that. I mean, Elf is definitely better, but I don't know. I like Home Alone, too. And Ooh. I know it's only, what is that, like a, like a two-point difference? Yeah. Um, it's like bigger Hol- in my mind than it is in my score. Yeah, but. it's weird. It's weird. But you mm-hmm. said you like Home Alone, too. You mean Home Alone, too, or Home Alone, also? Hey, we're not talking I'm about that. Ho- <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Home Alone, also. I haven't seen Home Alone, too, in quite in- and also a long time so but we that should was just when I watch it too. and just talk to ourselves about which one we yeah. like more mm-hmm. they should have made home alone also <laughs> <laughs> just his about his neighbor yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey you're not the only one <laughs> i'm here too also why does he have a new york accent I don't well, know. because it clearly takes place it's, in New York, it, yeah. not Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's a sequel to the second one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I'm also here. And then they're they're gonna make yeah. another one, Home Alone as bagel. well. <laughs> so final scores: Home Alone ended up with a 78.67 percent, which is very respectable. But it does fall to Elf, which ends up with an 85.66 percent final score. Which makes Elf our at least our 2021 um, holiday movie winner, I guess. All right, Yay! let's go. All right, Lo- love to hear that. Um, love to hear it. Any any final comments? I have one. Nice, but I'll save it for after the plugs. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed what you heard t- tonight today, um, feel free to gift us. A lovely six-inch ribbon-wrapped five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. You guys have no idea how much that means to us. Really helps us out. Um, and you know, if you if you like what you hear, you can always find us anywhere you listen to podcasts: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, anywhere pretty much. Um, you can also follow us on our personal social medias. Colin is on Twitter. Instagram and YouTube at the last call call spelled C O L Michelle is on Instagram at Michelle thoughts thoughts the way you think. And I am on Instagram as well at Joshy underscore one, two, four Joshy spelled with an I E. And again, we thank you guys for accompanying us on our holiday Christmas special episodes. We hope you stay tuned for next week. And thank you both for joining me under this Christmas tree and watching these two lovely Christmas movies. Thank you guys for joining me. Hope everyone's having a cozy December so far. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, I just want to say... And again, I hope all of you guys stay home, 
don't stay alone you know um stay home <laughs> don't eat the gum even though it's pretty stay I home stay alone stay no. home <laughs> stay home listen to our podcast stay home alone alone yeah mm-hmm. watch home alone watch all four watch all five i guess they have another one on disney plus oh right right um, home sweet something colin you had you had something for us yeah right? that was it the, oh, the bo- 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 <laughs> yeah, that's all I had to say. Lovely. Yeah. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? I was tr- trying to think of a... We didn't even talk about that quote. line. <laughs> we didn't talk about him in the office at all. We didn't say. We didn't say anything. We didn't talk Buddy about the anything. Elf, what's your favorite color? No, we what? didn't say anything about anything. That's all right. No, what? I know. Let's go Start another over. hour. Yep. Another hour on the docket. <laughs> um, I guess we could tell our audience to stay pepperminty, stay candy caney, stay... Stay... Uh, like, Cotton like Bolly. Buddy. Ooh, stay cotton bolly. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, ooh. Stay. Stay. Uh, stay stay lazy. Stay lazy and competent. <laughs> <laughs> stay diseasy. <laughs> and oh. we're the mean ones. And we're the mean ones, Josh. <laughs> Ew, Michelle, this is a, this is supposed to be a jolly time of year, and you're telling people to stay diseasy? I'm going to feed you to my tarantula. Oh, God. Yeah, and anyone still listening, Michelle wanted to go on a huge rant and just use the C word multiple times. <laughs> I dissuaded her, so you guys can, you know. Yeah, um, and it's not Christmas. Yeah, that's exactly how that yeah, conversation the C went. word was you not Christmas. You got me, you got me. It was, it was caroling. No, d- Michelle, enough. Don't don't it try it. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah, cookies. You know, stop. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay.